The latest season of The Cuphead Show has just dropped on Netflix. And alongside some of our favorite cups and demons, we've also got several other new characters with a whole range of different moralities and wacky personalities. With 13 more fun adventures to watch in this latest season, it's time to rank these characters. I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge, and this is The Cuphead Show Season 2, Good to Evil. Just a quick note, there will be major spoilers ahead for Cuphead Season 2, so maybe give these new episodes a watch before you enjoy our latest character ranking. We'd also like to mention that we're only going to be focusing on good and bad deeds that were featured in this season, and won't be mentioning too much about the previous season. If you want to know how we ranked those good deeds, check out our first Cuphead Show video. Alright, let's get started. As always, we're going to be starting with our most noble and pure-hearted characters before working our way down. These characters are the good. Beginning with our gold medal of good, we have Miss Cyclops. A relatively minor character, but one we felt deserved to mention. Although she comes off as the scariest prisoner that Cuphead and Mugman meet while in jail, she's actually a lot nicer than she lets on. When she catches the two brothers trying to escape, instead of trying to ruin their attempt or stop them from escaping herself, she does the exact opposite and throws them off the prison island, getting them all the way back to their cottage. We should also note that even before her big heroic moment, Miss Cyclops never really did any to warrant her negative reputation other than have a scary and intimidating looking face. For these reasons, we're giving her our top spot. For our silver medal of good, we're going to be giving it to Captain Brinybeard. It may be a bit odd to see a pirate get one of our top spots, but much like Miss Cyclops, his rough looks are a bit misleading. Now, to be fair, he does have a couple of negative traits that keep him from being at the very top. We see him mildly threaten Cuphead and Mugman with his sword, and he refuses to take them home when they ask, being more focused on giving his box of sweets to Kala Maria. But speaking of that, this is actually what boosts the captain so high up on our list. For as rough as he may be around the edges, Brinybeard actually seems to be a pretty sweet guy when it comes to romance. We see how much he genuinely cares about Kala Maria. Would he be me girlfriend? From getting her favorite sweets, despite how gross they may be, to respecting her wishes when she tells him not to call her baby. He loves Kala Maria for who she is, monster tendencies and all. And while he may have misunderstood the vibes on their first date, he still can't help but admire her. We should also add that while they maybe didn't start off on the right foot, we do see Brinybeard bond somewhat with Mugman, thanking him for his help. Who would have thought that a pirate would make for a pretty good friend, or would be good boyfriend material? Moving on to our bronze medal of good, we have the younger of the two cup brothers, Mugman. Yes, Mugman managed to fall from grace just a bit, but he still manages to be the most moral member of his family. Mugman is still a person who will at least try to do what's right even when it aggravates him. While he and Cuphead are stuck in jail, Mugman tries his best to be a model prisoner, earning the favor of many other prisoners, including Miss Cyclops. Being on the inside changes a mug. We see him go out of his way to help people like Captain Brinybeard and Cuphead. With the latter especially, we know that for as much as his brother may frustrate him, he doesn't want to see Cuphead get hurt and he truly does love him. However, Mugman does quite a few questionable things this season. When annoyed by the ice cream man, he not only verbally berates him, but attacks him on two separate occasions. Then, when he briefly becomes jealous of Cuphead's piano playing skills, he first nearly tries to cut off Cuphead's hands with hedge trimmers, before going off to sabotage Cuphead's concert piano, resulting in Ludwig being crushed. You were gonna crush me with a piano, huh? We also see him try to get revenge on Cuphead after Cuphead takes advantage of his kindness in the episode Lost in the Woods. 
Yeah, Mugman is just a bit unhinged this season. But like we said, more often than not, he still at least tries to do good. While we couldn't give him our top spot this time around, he manages to rise above most characters, though just barely. Finishing our good tier, we have the wacky and always happy Ice Cream Man. Though certainly annoying and more than a little oblivious, the Ice Cream Man never seems all too malicious despite the conflict he causes in his debut episode. All he really wants is to serve people and tell them about the flavor of the day. And though he could work on his methods some, he doesn't really do anything wrong. Now, would you like to hear the flavor of the day? We even see him apologize to Mugman after defending himself with sprinkles, showing that he doesn't really want to hurt anyone. We still had to bring his ranking down a bit, as while he was only trying to thank Mugman, he did try to run the poor kid down with his truck. Like we said, more than a little oblivious. He's also a bit rude and dead broke when he learns that the trio don't have enough money for ice cream, but we can't really take too many points away for that, not when compared to some of the things other characters on this list do. We've now reached a more neutral territory where characters that land somewhere in the middle of morality sit. This is the gray area. Starting off this tier is Miss Chalice. Despite all the trouble she got into during last season's finale, Miss Chalice didn't really learn much from her mistakes. While she may put on a friendly face, she's a frequent liar and has no qualms with using her ghost powers to mess with people. While Cuphead is the one who suggests their ghost hunting business, Chalice is the one who pushes for one more big score even when they have enough money for ice cream. We will give Chalice some credit, however, in that we see her protect Cuphead and Mugman when the angry mob tries to attack them. She also fights alongside them against the burn bomb quadruplets and dead broke instead of just running away like she did at the cookie factory. So hey, maybe she is getting a bit better. Next up, we have the titular Cuphead. Cuphead became much more mischievous this season, hence why we had to bump him down a few notches. Cuphead unfortunately hasn't learned much from his previous adventures, and what makes this worse is that he isn't often all that remorseful, unlike Mugman, who will still usually feel guilty when he does something bad. Probably one of his worst showings is in the episode Lost in the Woods, where Cuphead destroys several items with his rockets and then, after being shown kindness by his brother, takes his cabin and eats his pie. Cuphead also eats Mugman's hidden Halloween candy mere minutes after learning about it. Then, there's the episode Another Brother, where Cuphead tries to replace Mugman, being tired of how cautious Mugman can be. You're overprotective and lame, so I'll find another brother! Really, when it comes to the two brothers this season, it's often Cuphead who's starting the fights. And while Mugman may have been the one who was more in the wrong in the episode Piano Lesson, Cuphead still didn't really help matters. However, we aren't going to put him any lower as we still acknowledge that he's just a kid and he does, on occasion, try to make up for his mistakes. We should also point out that he does improve somewhat in the last episode of the season, The Devil's Pitchfork. We even see him create Mount Mugman in that episode. Aww. Really, judging by Cuphead's reaction when the devil takes Mugman, we would hope that the start of Season 3 sees him become much more heroic. Following him, we have the only sometimes wise Elder Kettle. Elder Kettle serves as the boy's guardian and role model, and is often trying to raise them to be responsible young men. Now, whether or not he actually succeeds in doing this, well, let's just say there's room for improvement. That's not to say he doesn't love his family. While he's cross at them for letting Vermin into the cottage, Elder Kettle does choose his boys over his cottage when Werner threatens them. While he did have a plan in mind, it's still a sweet gesture. 
Elder Kettle also emphasizes his love for his family in the episode where he tries to get a family photo. However, we wouldn't blame you if you felt this love was a bit more surface level in this instance. We learn in this episode that Elder Kettle will often promise to take the boys' places in order to make them behave, and then coincidentally forget about these promises. Later on in that episode, when the boys try to blackmail him with an embarrassing photo, Elder Kettle straight up tries to attack them and even chases them with a fire poker after the camera is destroyed. Oh, and did we mention that Kettle is technically an arsonist? Given that he destroyed several billboards with a flamethrower? Yeah, Mugman isn't the only one who became a bit more unhinged this season. Still, we won't put Elder Kettle any lower, as outside of the previously mentioned negative moments, he's still not too bad of a guy. He's grumpy and makes questionable choices, but he'll still try to look out for the boys for the most part, and as such, we can't really call him evil. Moving on, we've come to the pianist, Ludwig. Fun fact, Ludwig was actually in the Cuphead game, although he was an NPC and wasn't one of the bosses that you fought. While it's a nice easter egg, it's a bit of a shame that Ludwig turns out to be a jerk. Although he is talented, he hardly qualifies as being a good teacher. He tells Mugman that he loathes him before trying to turn it into a compliment. Your posture! It is exquisite! And the moment that he sees Cuphead as a better piano player, he completely dismisses Mugman without giving any regard to the boy's feelings. To top it all off, the end of the episode reveals that not only did Ludwig not care about either of his students, but he was also completely fine with stealing Cuphead's song. He's no evil mastermind, hence why we aren't putting him any lower. But we can't say that we were too sad when he got crushed off screen by a piano. Nearing the end of this tier, we have the very unnerving Bull Boy. Originally just a gag character, Bull Boy had a chance to shine in the episode Another Brother, where he becomes Cuphead's new brother. In an effort to catch Cuphead's eye, Bull Boy pushes himself to extremes with his dangerous and reckless stunts, not having much concern for his or Cuphead's safety. We also learn that not only does he want to be like Cuphead, but it's also implied that he wants to be Cuphead. Like we said, very unnerving. And the ending with him as the boy's doctor certainly doesn't help with this. That's your... Still, other than being creepy and reckless, he doesn't do anything too wrong or villainous. So, he manages to just barely make it into the greys. Finishing up our grey tier, we have the lovely Cala Maria. A fan favorite character to be sure, Cala Maria has a lot to like about her as well as quite a bit you have to look out for. In her song, we learn that Kala Maria's biggest dream is to be known throughout the Seven Seas as a fierce monster. To earn this reputation, it's implied that she's destroyed dozens of ships, turning the pirates that were on them into stone statues and likely eating the ones that she doesn't turn to stone like she threatens to do with Mugman. What did she say? Uh, she said she was gonna eat us. When it comes to her relationship with Captain Brinybeard, she doesn't have too much interest in him for the most part. She is, however, touched somewhat by his gift. While she can't return his feelings, Kala Maria does give the captain and the boys a 10 minute head start to get back to their ship. And even after threatening to eat them again, she ultimately ends up deciding to let them go, using her air kiss to help their boat get off the rocks and back into the water. So hey, maybe she isn't much of a heartless monster after all. Unfortunately, we still couldn't really ignore all the stoning and ship crashing, otherwise she would have possibly been a bit higher on our list. We've finally reached the characters who are truly wicked and who would probably be right at home in hell. These are the bad to evil. Topping this section is the always dopey henchman. For a demon, this guy is probably one of the friendliest characters around. 
he's never all that malicious, in fact, quite the opposite. When it comes to his boss, the devil, he's always seen trying to cheer him up or give him advice when he's feeling particularly frustrated. This courtesy can even sometimes extend to other characters, as we see in Release the Demons, where he protects King Dice from the devil's fire. But for as kind as Henchman is, we can't forget the fact that he is indeed a demon. He also encourages the devil to be destructive and cruel to mortals in the season 2 finale. Details, I want details! Not necessarily because he wants to see the people get hurt, but because Henchman knows that causing other people pain will make the devil happy. So yeah, a bit of a complicated situation, but ultimately, we felt that Henchman just barely qualifies for the bad tier. He may not be doing any bad deeds himself, but he still encourages them, and enabling evil deeds can sometimes be just as bad. Right under him is another demon, Stickler. Being just as annoying as ever, Stickler only makes a brief cameo in this season, being the one to break the bad news to the devil that his sole contract with Cuphead has expired, meaning that he can no longer legally take Cuphead's soul. In addition, we see that Stickler has the invisible sweater now, and he doesn't seem to mind electrocuting the devil with it. Although we suppose we can't blame him for that, nor can we blame him for being fairly unsympathetic towards his boss. Still, the guy can be both annoying and a bit of a jerk, given that he waited until after the deadline had already been hit to tell the devil that he was out of time. But with how little screen time he had in this season, we're unable to put him any lower. Next up, we have the third finest demons and the four horsemen. We're ranking the rest of the devil's demons together as they don't really have much of a personality nor much character to speak of. They really are just cannon fodder for the devil to use whenever he wants to threaten someone like Cuphead. They aren't very smart, nor do they seem to have much sympathy for each other, given how easy it was for King Dice to turn a couple of them against each other. They also don't seem to have a ton of loyalty to the devil, ultimately needing to be threatened in order to do their jobs. Even the devil's last resort, the four horsemen, are happy to take the day off after losing their horses, instead of, you know, actually trying to go after their horses. While not the evilest demons around, there's not exactly much good about them either. Going back to the episode, Dead Broke, we have the Burn Bomb Quadruplets. These wicked ladies are four ghosts who are willing to do anything for their freedom, including trapping kids in their paintings for a hundred years. Now, we could maybe understand if the quadruplets were simply desperate and felt they had no other choice, but that isn't quite the case. Not only are these ladies happy to doom children to what would seem like an eternity frozen in a painting, but they seem to be amused by the idea showing how cruel they truly are. They also aren't very sisterly towards each other, hitting or insulting one another when one messes up. All in all, when it comes to this show's ghost characters, these four are probably the worst that we've seen so far. Landing just outside our bottom three, we have Werner Wurman. Both a mechanic and a fighter, Werner is a pest that you don't want to mess with. Much like with the quadruplets, we'd understand if Werner was just hungry for food or acting in self-defense. Werner, however, throws all sympathy out the window when he starts outright attacking and trying to hurt the Cup Brothers and Elder Kettle, being far too amused by their little war. Werner even goes so far as to threaten to blow up Cuphead and Mugman with dynamite if Elder Kettle doesn't sign over the deed to the cottage. Now to sign the deed. Really, the only nice thing that we can say about him is that he knows when to call it quits, finally leaving the cottage once Elder Kettle tricks him. Getting our bronze medal of evil is none other than King Dice. 
Apologies to all the King Dice fans out there, but he still only gets one episode this season to shine. Still, King Dice manages to make the most of his screen time, showing off just how evil and selfish he can really be. When forced to go up to the surface with the rest of the Devil's team and release the demons, King Dice spends most of the episode manipulating and killing the other demons so that he can get the glory of finally capturing Cuphead all to himself. He almost sees it as a game, which kind of adds to just how messed up it is. Really, you'd think he would have at least a bit of hesitance, given how horrified he was at the devil turning all his top demons to ash. Well, guess not. For our silver medal of evil, we're giving it to Baroness Von Bonbon. While the Baroness may put on a sweet face, she turns out to be nuttier than a nut-filled candy bar. She frequently invites people into her world of sweets, giving them rules that she knows they won't be able to resist breaking. Once they do break them, she lets these rule breakers turn into sweets before trying to eat them, as we see her do with Cuphead and Mugman. <laughs> now you delicious! We're sure you all don't need us to tell you that cannibalism and attempted murder is pretty darn evil. What truly puts the Baroness this low, however, is the implications of what she does. After all, who knows how many other innocent people she's lured into her sweet paradise only to then eat them. They look so tasty! Of all the new characters, the Baroness is certainly the most evil of them all, with any friendly moments all just being part of the act. Still, she couldn't quite beat the original biggest baddie of the Cuphead show. Finally, the gold medal of evil is, of course, going to the devil. Yes, the devil is still the most evil character in the Cuphead show, although, are you really surprised? While he only gets two episodes this season, the devil still tries to do as much evil during them as possible. In Release the Demons, he destroys numerous demons with his uncontrollable temper, and only regrets this when he realizes that he has to use less than reliable henchmen to get the job done, not having any actual guilt over killing demons that were only trying to help him. Bring me my second finest demon! He also tries to destroy Stickler when he delivers the bad news regarding Cuphead's expired soul contract. Moving on to the season 2 finale, we see the devil happily torment mortals, including children and old ladies, and hear about him releasing all the carnivores from the zoo, ultimately doing all this just to make himself feel better and to prove that he's still plenty evil. This all culminates in him taking Mugman to hell as revenge for Cuphead stealing his pitchfork. Although we don't know yet what the devil will do to Mugman, whether he'll simply try to torture him or try to turn him into a demon like we see in the bad end of the Cuphead video game, either way, we're sure it'll be plenty evil. Even when he's limited to a 2 out of 13 episode showing, there's no topping the devil in terms of evilness. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.